slipped away. Well, um, I, I violated the rules. This is actually a, a concept blitz, uh, not a data blitz, but I will try to keep it to a fairly short amount of time. Acknowledging my colleague Mariana, who will, uh, Mariana Figueroa, who will be speaking in a minute, um, five minutes. Uh, <laughs> a system for measuring circadian disruption is, might improve uh, mental health outcomes. As I mentioned in my earlier, um, I'm not a clinician, and so this could be a tool and certainly welcome any reaction that you have. Um, in the middle of this is a metaphor, I think, for circadian rhythms, the relationship between the exogenous and endogenous relationship for circadian rhythms. On the right-hand side, the, the SCN, or suprachiasmatic nuclei, have an intrinsic period of 24.2 hours on average. And if you put somebody in a dark cave, they will continue to have circadian rhythms, but they eventually become out of phase with the light-dark cycle. What, um, and if you think about the girl in the swing is sort of the endogenous clock. She has a rhythm and she's going at a, at a certain uh, pace. But it's the sunrise and sunset, the 24 hour pattern on the retina, which is the girl pushing that actually regulates to be a 24 hour uh, pattern. So every morning you have to reset your clock as a bright sunny morning comes in so that you become synchronized with the light dark pattern. Again, if you're in total darkness, um, you will eventually become out of phase. So if you begin to think about people's behavior, if they're not getting the light and the dark pattern at the right time, they can quickly uh, come out of phase. Now, prior to electric lighting, say 100 years ago, the light dark pattern was driven by uh, sunrise and sunset. But we now have electric lighting that is definitely capable of, of stimulating us at a point which would not be anticipated by the circadian clock. It look, counts those photons and then changes its circadian phase. So managing the electric light is a central theme. And if you don't do that through circadian disruption, not just uh, trans-oceanic uh, flight, but people that do shift work, for example, uh, poor sleep, higher stress, increased anxiety, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, higher incidence of breast cancer. These biological rhythms are, as I said before, the platform for all biology of every species on this planet, from plants to animals and so on. It is the foundational rhythm that one has to take into account. Now, um, I mentioned on the y-axis here is, is uh, I won't be able to have go through it, but it shows the synchrony between the light-dark pattern and the rest activity pattern as measured in the field for nurses. This is part of the nurses' health study. Zero means a day shift, then one night of rotating shift, two nights, three nights, four nights, five nights. You see a wide distribution, but what you can get is the higher this metric on the left is the more entrained you are to um, a, the regular 24-hour light dark pattern. So by the time you're doing three nights of shift, you're totally screwed up. Uh, you're getting light at the wrong time, you're active at the wrong time, and these people are more susceptible to things like breast cancer, and that was really the that study. Now what we've been able to do, my background's in biophysics, uh, be able to do if essentially the wiring diagram of how photons incident on the retina are converted into neural signals. Uh, you get a spectral sensitivity, it's a very nonlinear system, um, but on the left-hand side shows you, um, if you will, the blue curve, just to make it simple, what happens if you get daylight in the morning. Uh, there's a sub-additive region, so photons don't add, add up nicely. Um, and then on the right-hand side is an input-output relationship. Those different dark bars, just to give you a sense about ecological conditions, a dark bar would be nighttime, um, say uh, walking around Chapel Hill at night. The next one would be interior lighting like it is right now. The, it's a little hard to see, but the next shade of gray would be in things like offices uh, that you'd be in with a daylight office, and then the clear part is daylight. What you notice is architectural um, buildings and environments are down around the low part of this input-output relationship. It's a very weak, weak signal um, that we're experiencing right now in terms of our circadian regulation. So being able to manage your light in an architectural environment becomes very critical, but knowing where you are on the curve turns out to be uh, essential for us to predict what um, the response will be in terms of circadian entrainment or disruption.
Um, we are modeling not only the um, stimulus, but also how the oscillator actually works. And I won't go through a detail, but it's been incorporated into an iOS device uh, that we can actually um, acquire the light. You, it's what we call daisy light, uh, which is, you'll see us a little um, tab that you wear on your shirt. Uh, you have wrist actigraphy that then is, with Bluetooth, communicated to an iPhone. Now, this is a project funded by the Swedish government, uh, what they call the Swedish Healthy Home. And so you take that information, then when you get home, you download the data. It'll control the lighting in your own home. Uh, you walk through your different spaces. It, it becomes, if you will, human-centric rather than building-centric. And then it also provides you some guidance about what to do tomorrow. Let's say you normally get up at 6 in the morning, but tomorrow you want to get up at 5. It then will adjust the lighting to actually match that desired sleep sleep-wake cycle. So these are a summary of the insights. Circadian disruption is closely associated with anxiety and depression. That's what this is about. There's nothing new there. Light and dark govern circadian entrainment. I think often people forget that it's the dark is as important as the light over the 24 hours. And every photon counts. We've tried to do things like say, well, we'll give you bright light in the morning and everything will be fine. It turns out that every photon counts throughout the day. You cannot predict what you should have the next day unless you kept track of when the photons are incident on your retina. And again, spectrally weighted properly for the stimulus of the circadian system. We have a pretty good model, I think, right now, as I mentioned in my earlier comments with Dr. Murray, that we can predict as well circadian phase in the laboratory or the field with these devices. Um, but it's the interpretation of those data that ultimately matters. If we're going to treat disorders, then we have to have not only the correct stimulus response characteristic, but we must have a model that is able to make those predictions. And again, I, I am completely inept when it comes to clinical diagnosis or things like that. But these collaborations that Eric and, and Mitch are trying to collaborate would be something we would desire to do. I think the other thing that may be just too nerdy for anybody to care, but this is the first closed loop system that I'm aware of where you actually are uh, not just sort of ballistically saying, well, here it is, let's go give a light box. You actually have a, a real time way of interpreting moment by moment where you are in your circadian time. So you can even imagine a, a watch that will give you your circadian time because you have no conscious access to it. It's one of those things, if you can count on biologically, the sun will rise and the sun will set, notwithstanding the election, every day, and it'll be a 24-hour rhythm. Um, but we have no conscious access. Why would we waste neurons on something like that? So you need a technology, in my view, to be able to measure your circadian time and then be able to adjust your behavior accordingly. So.